I, I'm glad that when I was growing up, my mother used to take me to church three times on a Sunday before I rebelled when I got like 12 years old or something. And I uh, used to go to Sunday school. It was a really good Sunday school. And I thank God that in this Sunday school that we went to, we had to memorize Bible verses. And also, I'm so glad that this wasn't just a religious sort of like Bible school, you know, where you teach your children, God's away up there, and you're away down here, and, and, and he doesn't really interact with you. That's religion. God's up there, and you hope one day you're in the by and by. You hope one day, one day if you're a good little boy, You'll go, to, you'll go to heaven, you'll get your mansion up there, and you're away down here. You know, and that's like religion. And I'm so glad that the Sunday school that I went to, it's not the same for everyone, but the Sunday school I went to, they were saying that God, you can have a personal relationship with God here and now. God is interested in you. God, God wants to know what your plans are. God wants to know what you want to do in life. In fact, one of the verses, is that uh, 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 God gives you the desires of your heart. Yeah. So, so we were learning things like that in Sunday school. It was very interesting and a lot more different from a lot of the other churches around the area where there was a lot of religion, where they talked a lot about God, but they didn't really know God. And one of the verses that we got prizes for, and I did get some prizes, in Sunday school when I was a child was for memorizing Bible verses and this is one of them and it's always stayed with me uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight so the first thing there is what we were taught in Sunday school now, now I'm, I'm just giving you the very basic things in Christianity and you could say that these are like keys to your life and to your future. They're very simple, and, and some of you will know it, and, and would be able to maybe explain it better than myself, but it's trust in the Lord. As a Christian, you will not be able to get through this virus, virus uh, pandemic that's going about if you don't trust in the Lord. Right? You will meet people, and they'll say to you, we're all doomed. Captain Manning. Captain Manning, we're all doomed, doomed, I tell you. Yeah, yeah. Anyone see that? Dad's Army. I used to love Dad's Army. Mate, we're all doomed. So funny. And it's still on TV at the minute. It's so funny. It's, it's like the humor in Dad's Army is like endless. It's, it's like it's for eternity as well. Because you're still watching it now. And it's, so, it's such an old program. And uh, so, so sometimes, yeah. In life, you'll hear people saying, we're all doomed. There's no ways out. But there is for a Christian. And that way is to trust. Trust in God. Right? With all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. So the way it was explained to me, is your head is what will tell you that we're all doomed. In your head, you will get ideas. You will get thoughts. And they're not from God. And we all get them. I get them. Every religious leader will get them. Thoughts come into your head. And the Bible says we've got to take thoughts captive. You've got to renew your mind. Which is all different sermons for different times. But thoughts will come into your head. Now we, we have the power as Christians to stop the thoughts. You can look at them. Yes, that is. That's. Oh, right. Right. Whoa. Whoa. Where did that come from? That is a very serious thought. But as Christians, we don't allow them to drop into your heart. Do not, in other words, don't believe them from your innermost being, your heart. So don't actually take it on board as the truth. It's a thought. Thoughts do not rule your life. And thoughts do not conquer you unless you allow them to. You can change your thoughts. You don't, you don't need to allow your thoughts to master you. Because that will rob you of the joy of living. Because not all thoughts are good as we know. So as you grow up, I, I think as we grow as Christians, you get to trust God more and more. As more experience, as you become more experienced, you see things happen in life. Things happen and you get to trust God. And you realize that trusting God is the best thing 
to do. Now, I'm sure there was times when Jesus had his disciples and he was trying to, trying to teach the twelve, and maybe others as well, to trust in God and to have faith in God. Because the Romans were on board, the Romans was there, there was a lot of chaos, and I'm sure Jesus wanted to get the twelve disciples, put them in a bag, and give them a good shake. Have you ever thought, do you know people like that? You want to put in a bag, and you want to give them a good shake in life. Well, Jesus was like that as well with the twelve uh, disciples. Now, if you want to graduate as a Christian in this life, you're here for a reason. There's two dates, or the most important dates of your life. The date you were born, anyone tell me second date? Part of the date you were born is the most important date. What's the second date? The date we found out why. That is correct. Well done, Jack. That's the date that you find out what. So why are you here? Why have you been born? Is the two most important uh, dates. I was hoping somebody would have said, and the date you die. But that's not. That's just another date. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you nearly said it. Because yeah, that's what I would have said. But the profound meaning is, why are you here? What has God put, what desires have you got in your heart? What are you trusting God for? And, uh, and God is interested. And it's material as well, as physical, as well as spiritual. So God's interested in all of you, what makes you up and what you're doing in life. Uh, some people, and, and I can remember the Sunday school teacher saying to me, and I must have been about eight, seven or eight, and he, he was saying to me, you've got a future, but don't look aimlessly into the future. Now, I didn't understand the word aimlessly as much, but he was trying to say, try to figure out what it is that you're meant to be doing in life. Think about your future. You do have a future. Now, at seven and eight years of age in Northern Ireland, there was a lot of troubles on in there, and we didn't realize that there wasn't a lot of jobs. And if you had a job with somebody, could you trust them? If they were a Catholic, they could have friends and people. And, they, and there was a lot of people getting shot. A lot of innocent people was getting shot simply going to work in Northern Ireland. Horrendous. And it was like cold-blooded murder. So even if you could get a job, can you trust the people you work with? No, I'm just throwing it out there. Can you trust the people you work with here? I don't know. Maybe they're not going to kill you, but they'll backstab you. They'll tell lies on you. Yeah, They'll want to punish you. You could lose your job. And what were we looking at last week? We were looking at a woman caught in adultery, brought in the fairy act, if you can believe that. Yeah, I think that's even a lie. Yeah, brought the fairy act of adultery to Jesus. Yeah, and Jesus, when all the accusers left, if you remember that, for those who were there, Jesus says, I don't accuse you. Go and sin no more. No consequences. And you'll find in life people want to put consequences onto you. You could lose this. You're going to have to be punished. You're going to have to go on probation for three years to make sure it's genuine. But with Jesus, none of that happened. And that's why I don't agree with things that do happen in religious circus, uh, circles. There's only one red book. Claire was on about the redemption. Is that the redemption book, the red book? No. There's only one manual. What's the manual? It's the Bible. That's what I believe in, and that's the teachings of Jesus is what I go by. You can have all your other manuals. You can have the red book. The only red book we want is the red book of life that your name is written in that. Babies get red books, don't they? If, if you've got babies, the first thing you get is a little red book you put down doctor's appointments in. We've got it now for Caden. That's how I remember the red book. Everything has to go in that red book. For Cain, and I was looking at it, God has a red book for us. Everyone's got a red book. Uh, I forget what it's called, the book of life. The red book. I mean, and God records everything. There's no bad things in it. It's all going to that. That's what's red. The blood of Jesus. Jesus paid the debt for everything I've ever done and you that's wrong and sinful. There's no bad things in it. It's all good in the book of life. And that's why Jesus said, 
uh, was able to say to the woman, go, you're forgiven. Sin no more. No consequences. Because Jesus was going to the cross, and through the cross of redemption, we all go free. Because we were all guilty. We all go free. The wages of sin is death. Jesus paid the price on the cross. We go free. The guilty go free, innocent. And that's how it goes today. So trusting in the Lord gives you a future. You've got a future. You've got a hope. And God has a plan for every single person here. That's amazing. And as soon as we stop thinking up here, what is the plan? How do we do it? How am I going to grow that my plan, right? God's going to fill this church. No, right? That's, the, that's, that's what I believe in my heart. No, the thoughts come to me. Well, it doesn't look like it. There's loads of empty seats here. Yeah, who's going to pay? It's going to cost money to advertise. It's going to cost money to get people in multimedia. People with talent. I see a band up here playing uh, musical instruments and playing really good. A live band singing all these great hymns and courses that we sing. Yeah. So, so the thought comes into my mind. Now, if I believe the thought that comes into my mind, I wouldn't even tell you because because uh, I feel like I'm the biggest loser walking in leather shoes. I mean, they're not leather, right? But um, I'm like the biggest idiot because my that's what my thoughts is telling me. You're not real. Be real, right? So I have to make sure those thoughts. Do not go into my heart because I trust in God. I trust what He's put in there in my heart. Yeah? So that's what we have to do as Christians, as believers. Jesus says, when you pray, when you pray, believe that you receive. Yeah? He doesn't say believe you receive after you get after you get the manifestation. After there's 500 people in this church. And there's multiple service and a whole ministry team going on. He doesn't say believe then. He says when you pray, believe. He doesn't say when you have the cash. Yeah, when you get the cash, then I'll believe. That's, you know, cash talks louder than words, doesn't it? Yeah, so when I see the cash, so a lot of us say, so instead of saying when you pray, it, it's like when you pay. You, you can say, when you pray, God, I'll believe. Yeah, God said, no, it's when you pray, you believe. You've got to believe. Call those things into being that are not. Call them into being into your life. Uh, so that's an introduction. It's okay, because there's not many here. Are you bored yet? No, Don't worry, you should well be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, so, so what do we trust? We trust in the medicines. Tablets, virus. You, if you get that virus, you want to get the medicines. You want to get on those uh, machines that keep you taking over and keep you alive. So, so we trust in tablets. We trust in the doctors. We trust in medicine. We trust in, in uh, tablets. You know, take your tablets. Don't panic. If you miss one, you can have a little counter thing. Now on Monday, Tuesday, one. You can see if you miss one, you can take it. But don't take it after you take the next days. And then you have two that day and three that day. That's not the way it's meant to work. But what is your focus? What do we trust? What about the money market? No. You, you, you think the money market goes up all the time. So long as there's no world war, you will make money. You go on the money market, the Dow Jones. You, you go on the Nasdaq, Dow Jones. You go on their money, but you will make money all year long, so long as there's no world war or no pandemics, pandemics, yeah, and, and, and no crash in the market for some reason, and the oil doesn't go down in price. Yeah. So what's happened recently? The oil, the Saudis have argued with the Russians, and the oil price hit rock bottom. Then you had a pandemic at the same time, a virus, and the bottom of the money markets fell out. How many people, there was billions lost on the stock market recently. So if you trusted in the stock market, and some people have their pensions in the stock market, and their pensions is associated with how well the stocks do in the stock market. So a lot of people are worried about their pensions. Church of Nazarene, I don't know. Did they have some money on the stock market on these long-term, sure, foolproof? 
The, the government bonds are foolproof. Well, I heard that the government bonds, which are 30 year foolproof, they drop the norm. Yeah. So, so who knows? Even churches can lose money. Yeah. So, so uh, because you got to trust in God. Do you know, if you just trust in God, I personally believe if you're meant to have something, you can have it. I also believe that sometimes trusting in God, things get worse before they get better. I also believe that can happen. And it's like trying your faith. Do you keep trusting? Do you keep believing in God no matter what's happened? Turn to your neighbor and say, a spades. Turn to your neighbor and say, a spades a shovel. A spades a shovel. Yeah. A spades a shovel. Yeah. So let's call it what it is. Yeah. Some people get offended, but what I'm saying is have faith in God. Have faith in God. Trust in Him. Believe in Him. And that's what I believe. And and you know, some some people, I've spoken in churches and uh, with Christians, and I'm thinking they're so sad, they're so upset, they're so miserable, they have no joy, you know, and, and we're all doomed. Yeah, you talk about we're all doomed. Yeah. And then it's like belligerent. You get Christians sometimes that are belligerent. We don't want to be belligerent. What does that mean? Hostile. That means somebody is hostile and wants to fight your faith. If you've got faith, you keep your faith. You keep your trust and your belief in God because He can do it. Now, also, the other verse we're going to look at, Mark 11, if you do the next verse, have faith in God. Now, this is the teaching of Jesus. And for some Christians, they still don't get that. And uh, I'm not going to go through the whole passage, but it's where Jesus says, uh, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go through yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore I tell you, whenever you ask for in prayer, believe. I believe, say, I believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Now, I've listened to people preaching. I've listened to preaching. Sometimes they say, let's climb the mountain. Jesus never said climb the mountain. Let's climb Everest. How do you do it? Step at a time. You soon get over it, will you? Really? Yeah? So long as, so long as other things don't happen. He's not saying climb it. He's saying speak to it and cast it into the sea. Totally different. Some Christians don't speak to things. They'd rather get through it. They'd rather climb it. They'd rather suffer in silence. Let's suffer and we're, and we're like the doom and gloom sort of church. And let's just get through it and God will come through way in the future. Some point. Jesus is counteracting that and Jesus is saying speak, speak to it. Use your words of faith. Believe what you say and it shall be done. This is where it's a high level of Christianity. This is a high level of spirituality. He said, speak to it and, and what you bind on earth shall be bind on heaven. What you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You have power in your faith, by faith, through your words. Your words are extremely powerful. So the virus, the virus is coming. Yeah. The black plague, but black death is its coming. Yeah. Uh, what's it, the bubonic? What is the bubonic plague is coming? The angel of death is coming. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And you go oh, and you can sit in church panicking. Right? Or you can speak, it ain't coming to my house. It ain't going to get on me or any of my children. Our grandchildren. Yeah. My children, our grandchildren. Speak the words. Declare the words. Declare prosperity, health, spirituality, faith, and belief. That's what you should be doing as a Christian. And, and trusting in the Lord that you will be all right. It will pass and Jesus will be with you and he'll give you the power and his health. Now, when I thought of this, I wasn't going to say this, 
because I thought, well, what if people die? What if people get it? Yeah? What what if what if well well did they have how much faith? This is where it's an offense for me to preach like this in some churches, because they'll say, How dare we stand up and say people have died and they didn't have enough faith, maybe? Yeah. If people die, am I saying they didn't have enough faith or they didn't pray enough or they didn't speak enough? That's the unknown. Am I saying that? Or am I saying, am I saying there, there is no way that virus can, can attack you and come upon you if you have faith, if you believe, if you speak against it? This is where people get very offended. And they got offended with Jesus. Jesus. Very, very offended with what Jesus said to a lot of the people. And that's why the disciples never got it. And that's why Jesus wanted to put them in a bag and give them a good shake. Only believe. All things are possible to those who believe. That's it. As a Christian, this is what we want to get across. The devil is out to deceive you. The Bible says the devil has come to rob you, to steal from you. How does he rob you? How does the devil rob you? He will tell you this virus is going to get. I'm, I'm bringing a virus and you're going to get it. You're going to get the virus. Now that's the thought from the devil that can rob you of the peace, the love, and the good things that God says. Be mindful of these things. The joy, the good, the peace, the lovely. God wants you to be focused on them. The devil comes and puts in your mind, you're going to get the virus. So that's how the devil robs you, with thoughts in your head. Then you start dwelling on the thoughts. Then you start believing the thoughts and not what God says. God says have faith and believe that you can say to the mountain, be cast out and it will be done for you. You know Jesus can't lie. Jesus can't lie. The one thing Jesus did, he's a sinless son of God and Jesus cannot lie. If Jesus could lie, I wouldn't believe it myself and I wouldn't be teaching it. When you think Jesus can't lie, and when Jesus said just believe, have faith, trust in me, Trust in the Father God that He's going to look after you. If you can really do that from your heart, always remember, Jesus cannot lie. The devil lies, but Jesus can't lie. It's amazing you can do it. Own what you say. So if you say something, own it. And that's how you stop being really negative or saying things you don't want. Because as soon as you say something and you own it, then you start thinking more carefully about what you say. Your words have life and your words have death. The Bible tells us that. Life and death are in your words. So what's your house going to do? What are you going to do? We're going to speak and you're going to be accountable for what you say. Jesus said that. It's what you say. By their fruits you shall know them. And by their deeds, by their words, they are justified. It's what you say and what we speak is what we're teaching here today. Jesus paid the debt, let me tell you. I can go to Weatherspoons and I can get unlimited coffees. Now, you might think, well, that's a good deal. 135, it's went up a bit. It's 135 now for the only one. You might think, they're giving it away. How are they making, how are they making a profit in Weatherspoons? Because you can only drink about three cups at the most. You only have about two or three. It's unlimited. Yeah, but your belly isn't. Have you ever tried drink, drinking three, three, four cups of unlimited? Have you ever been to these buffets unlimited? Yeah. Do you know what they put out? If you start the queue, you always go down to the back of the queue. That's what I do. You go to the start. It's all the things that fill you up. You never trust this, have you? How they make their money. If you go to the front of the queue, you look at it the next time, buffet, eat as much as you want, start here. Yeah? You start there, they give you the carbs up this end. All the good meat and all the good protein and all the stuff that we, makes money. Yeah, it's all down this end. Because you'll fill up on the starters. 
you'll fill up with all them carbs and breads and all those things. Yeah, and then you'll write them, right? Yeah, and you'll struggle. And most people can't finish a lot. In fact, that's how they make their money. They won't, they won't be able to eat. You think you can eat three meals? You can only eat three meals if you miss out the carbs. The first, go straight to the main dish, what you want, and put pie that on. No starters, no desserts, no nothing. Main meals, you eat it. Yeah, just a tip. I know this from experience. I've had three dishes. Love it, beautiful. I make my money when I go to unlimited buffets. Unlimited coffees, pace yourself. Well, me and Jack's down there on a Wednesday, 10 while 12. I know I'm only getting about three cups. Four at the most, I'll probably leave a bit in the fourth one. So I go an hour early. I get an extra couple of cups in as well before Jack even gets. I get five or six cups when I go to, you know, and, and, and I make my money. No. The death of Jesus is unlimited. It's unlimited refills. He's unlimited. When you believe and you have faith, it's not like, well, you've run out. You've run out. I can only give you so much. God can give you unlimited. All things are, it's unlimited. And if we start thinking in our heads that God is literally, he's okay, George, he's literally trying. He says, come and taste, see the Lord. See if he's good. The Lord is good. Come and taste. Come and see. And that's what I've been doing. Uh, I'm not a guru, so don't have uh, loads and loads of faith and loads and loads of belief. I'm not somebody, I'm still working on it. But so far, I've been okay. So far, God has looked after me. So far, and you know that Sunday school teacher, I wish I knew his name, I was thinking through and those. I, I, I know if I went back to the church, they would tell me who his name is, and I'm thinking of doing that, or contacting them. I want to know who he was. Because it, it stayed with me all my life. I was about seven, eight. I know I was seven or eight because I've still got the book. She used to get a book from Sunday school as a prize if you've been there all year. You get a book. Well, I've got my seven-year-old and my eight-year-old book from that church. So I know I was about seven or eight. Now, I couldn't read them books until I was 40 years of age. And then I realized, oh, I can read it now because I found them. I thought I could read. I can remember getting them books when I was seven or eight. It was like a different language because I, I wasn't very good at reading. I wasn't a seven or eight when it came to me understanding and, and how I could read. There was no way. I was thinking they don't know me. Oh yeah, really good book. And then it was stored. And then I got them again when I was about 14 years of age. And I read them. They're actually good books. Really good, good books with principles in them. And I'd like to say to the Sunday school teacher that what he taught, because I, I believe he's still alive, as far as I know, I'd like to say, I, I believe what he told me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. So what we teach children stays with them all their lives. It got into my heart, somehow or other, that got into my heart. And stayed with me. And so is other Bible verses. So get the word in your heart and speak it. Now I haven't followed it. It's only since I've been a Christian I've been following this. And I believe, just to finish, that if we follow the trust and the obey, and that God gives you the desires of your heart, you will see miracles in your life. And you'll see miracles here. And we're going to see miracles in this community. Miracles because we keep trusting and we keep obeying. And here's what we do. Just to finish, a final thought. Give the devil, turn to your neighbor and say, Give the devil, say, Give the devil both barrels. Both barrels. That's what we should do as a Christian. Give the devil both barrels. Yeah? Of the word of God, your faith and your belief. That's how them thoughts stopped in my mind. And that's why I'm up here preaching. And that's why I preach faith. And, and I motivate. I try to inspire people. Because in churches, even though it's a church, they don't go faith and belief. They only do it to a certain level. Well, I want to do it 100%. 
I want us to trust and have faith in God 100% is our target as a congregation here in morning. Amen. 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 Uh, let's give God a clap. Let me just pray in closing. And uh, we'll just ask for a double bless blessing upon us all. Father God, we just praise you and we thank you for what you teach in your word. I know not everyone gets it. Lord, correct where I've went wrong. If I've went wrong and I've said anything I shouldn't have said, Lord God, please correct it. Take it from the hearts of the people here this morning. Lord God, I pray that I've spoke faithfully what I've read in your word, not about you, but who you are and what you've revealed to me. Lord, I just pray for every person here for a double portion of your love your grace and your peace upon every heart here this morning. Lord, I just pray that they have enough faith and belief that if any doubts come into their mind through the news or through what other people say in society and through what they what, what's going to happen with this virus, Lord God, I just pray that they have enough faith and belief to say, no, it's not coming to my house. No, I don't believe it. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to obey you, Lord God, for there is no other way. I'm going to believe that you've got my paths. You've known the very breath in my body when I was born. You know the date and you know why I'm here. I'm here to give faith to people in this community who are going to, who are going to uh, panic, panic by. And, they're, and they're, going to, they're, going, they're going to believe in doom and gloom. I'm here to be the light and the salt in morning. I'm here to bless my family. Lord, bless us all we pray. Bless us with the spirit of Elijah upon every person here. And Lord God, we just pray that we really take your word at face value. We believe it and we believe you're with us, you're in us, and you're greater than he that is in the world. We thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, that you live in us and you're not a way out there somewhere. Up high and above, but you're in us, you live in us, and you're with us through the power of your Holy Spirit in every heart here this morning. We just praise you and you we thank you, Lord, for this encouragement this morning, and we just pray that we go out blessed to be a blessing for other people around here who we may meet. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give God another clap for that.